สวัสดีครับ You're watching Thailand News today, where we update you on the typical COVID stories, the current no confidence debate taking place, and some home experiments gone wrong. Stay tuned. Thai airlines and hotels say that the tourism crisis in the year ahead is set to dwarf last year's in terms of its impact, a lack of customers, and an absence of government aid. Asia Aviation, the largest shareholder in Thai Air Asia, is warning that when international tourism eventually does resume, there may not be enough suppliers to meet demands, as most operators have had to cut back operations and forgo leasing arrangements for planes. Despite the government's domestic tourism stimulus campaign, over 1.3 million airline seats, out of a quota of 2 million, remain unused. Even though the subsidy was increased from 2,000 to 3,000 baht, the low take-up shows people's reluctance to fly at the moment, opting to travel to destinations within driving distance instead. Meanwhile, the National Economic and Social Development Council stated that international tourism numbers are likely to drop to 3.2 million this year, half of last year's 6.7 million arrivals. Even the ever optimistic Thai tourism minister slashed his projections for the year's tourism in half over the past month. The Tiger has a full video about the severe impact of the current situation on Thailand's airline industry on our YouTube channel. Thai PM General Prayutan Ocha has denied allegations made during a parliamentary no-confidence debate that he had received benefits relating to illegal gambling dens. The leader of the opposition, Seiri Ruam Thai Party, made the assertion at the start of the four-day debate yesterday. The Prime Minister has rebutted the claim, claiming the information was simply taken from the media and solid evidence and witnesses had not been presented to back the claim. He said, quote, You have to find evidence and witnesses and take the case to court to prove the veracity of your allegation. During the opening address of the censor debate, the leader of the opposition said they would expose irregularities in Thailand's administration by the current government and unmask PM Prayut, whom they allege has had a monopoly on power and damaged the country. This will be the second time the government is censored by the opposition in a no-confidence debate after having stayed in office for almost two years. Thailand's national carrier, Thai Airways, has been put to use to transport 200,000 doses of a COVID-19 vaccine from China to Bangkok, arriving next week. The CoronaVac vaccine from Chinese manufacturer Sinovac will be the first COVID-19 vaccine to be administered in the kingdom. Thai Airways flight TG675 will take off from Beijing next Wednesday morning. On board will be the first 200,000 vaccine doses out of a total of 2 million ordered by the government from the supplier. It's understood the vaccine will be transported in temperature controlled containers and can be stored at normal fridge temperatures. The public health minister, Anutin Chan Wiragun, says the Food and Drug Administration will approve the vaccine for emergency use with priority going to frontline healthcare workers and other vulnerable groups. A human rights lawyer says a further 18 political activists, including three leaders of the Rasadon pro-democracy group, could face prosecution. The Center for Human Rights Lawyers says the activists will appear before prosecutors today, where they face charges related to last September's protest at Thammasat University and Sanam Luang in Bangkok. The three protest leaders have been charged with various offenses, including violation of Thailand's strict Les Majesté law, which prohibits insulting, criticizing, or defaming the monarchy. Norasset says he plans to ask for a delay to indictment proceedings for the 18 accused to give police more time to question defense witnesses. It's understood a number of university lecturers and MPs from the opposition Gao Klai party were willing to act as bail guarantors for the 18. 
However, there is no guarantee that the court will agree to bail, particularly in the case of the three charged with less majesty offenses. While the COVID-19 pandemic has plunged many people around the world into financial hardship, and many individuals, including Thai citizens, have turned to producing their own homemade adult content on the British social media platform OnlyFans to make ends meet, so to speak. Even Thailand's harsh pornography laws don't seem to deter desperate content creators, some of whom said they had to resort to the infamous social media platform, quote, to get through the pandemic. On the platform, a visitor must subscribe to a creator for a monthly fee in order to see their page's content. In addition, visitors can tip the content creators directly, and 80% of the tip goes directly to the recipient. One content creator said he'd paid off nearly 500,000 baht in debts within three months. Another, previously working in hospitality, said he was earning four to five times as much, and the work hours were much more flexible. Content creators skirt around Thailand's pornography laws because OnlyFans is a, quote, controlled and closed space, so it would be difficult to be prosecuted. However, a lecturer at Jualongkorn University's Faculty of Law says adult content creators cannot demand protection under the law when their photos and videos are unlawfully disseminated by others, as under Thai laws, the content is considered obscene material. In fact, he said, they risk being prosecuted under existing laws. Finally, and not related to the last story, rescue workers in Bangkok received an unusual call for help from a hospital in Nong Kham district on Sunday. A caller from the local hospital reported that they needed help treating a man who'd got his finger trapped in a metal ring. But when rescue workers arrived at the hospital, it was in fact the man's penis that was stuck inside an iron ring. The hospital did not have the necessary equipment to remove the item, which was around two millimeters in thickness, the ring that is. The Rescue Foundation says the man's penis was inflamed and it took them nearly two hours to cut the ring off. It's understood the unnamed patient was between 25 and 30 years of age and had been engaged in a sexual experiment gone wrong. The volunteer team says this is the second time they've had to deal with this type of misadventure. And there we go. You're up to date on what's going on in this wonderful country. Don't forget to subscribe and check out our channel. Until next time, สวัสดีครับ.